Everyone, hi. Bruce Moffson, LCSW, coming at you with another musical breakdown from Sunridge of Nevada. Guys, it's been a while, not going to lie. I've got a lot of flack and feedback to do this next artist that we're going to about to get into. And the name is Bedwetter, and we've been asked this repeatedly. And, you know, you also know him by Little Ugly Maine. And the song we're going to be doing is Haze of Interference. You know, I honestly, even before doing this video just right now, I had to have a long conversation with my agent slash producer and how to break this down because there's so much here. There's so much to talk about that, quite honestly, this could have been a four hour video. Um, and what we, we're not going to do that, obviously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this song down, of course. Then I want to really do something a little different tonight is read something that he wrote about his own struggles with mental health comments that came back from it, some concepts to think about for yourselves going forward, and just kind of tying it all together and give this man a lot of credit for doing what he did. So without further ado, here we go. I want to first give a preamble of how I saw the song itself, and then I'm going to go into the lyrics. He has it very interesting, and you know he has a style that's very unique, which is why he's so well-known and so popular. He doesn't hold anything back. He's very raw and in your face. That's kind of how his music comes across to me, and that's his style, which is fine. But it goes, I'm not sure what it was, and it's very dreamy, and it's very slow, and it's almost very intoxicating. And it's like a beginning. It's like he's falling and he's spinning and just tumbling over and over. I'm not sure what it was. And he says it four times. And he, you know, he, it's like he can't hold on to anything. And no matter, you know, what he's trying to do, no matter how hard he's trying, nothing is happening. He can't, there's no center. And everything is real. But it's also not at the same time. A lot of yin and yang in this song. Um, it's like he's falling into an endless pit with just moving back and forth. There's nothing that's nothing solidified for him. He's then spitting out the words, yelling, you know, just those two verses, bam, bam. You know, and what he's saying to me is that I am begging you, begging you you know, to take you into my world of mental illness. You know, I'm going to bring you into it. I'm going to show you what it's like. You know, you want to know? Now you're going to know. Um, how people look at you and treat you when you're really, really dealing with it. You know, you just drift without an anchor to hold you in place. Very scary. And he doesn't leave anything, you know, to the imagination. This, the words from this song... I've listened to, I listen to a lot of his music, of course, to get to understand him better. There's rawness here. There's pain here. There's anguish here. You know why, guys? Because it's real. It's him. You're not just taking a topic, you know, trying to say this, trying to say that. It's been done a thousand times before. When you're talking about yourself, when you go autobiographical, it changes you. You know, he's, he's, to me, he's so honest here and so open. It makes a song so powerful to me. Now, here we go. Now, as we've done before, I'm not going to say every line. because I'm only, I'm only going to focus on the lines that are relevant to me, and we're just going to go forward. Here we go. So I'm not sure what it was. That's the intro. Then the outro is the same thing. I'm not sure what it was. It's almost like bookends. The beginning and in the end, you know, slow very, very angry, very powerful in the beginning, and then slow again at the end. It's like all the energy is kind of sucked out of him from explaining who he's trying to be and who he's not and how he's trying to go forward. It goes like this. This is Travis speaking. Now, the way it was clarified to me, I, didn't really have, I had to really understand this, this. these two verses. The first verse is Travis talking, and the second verse is Little Ugly Mane ripping Travis for not being able to be comfortable with who he is, and then creating the persona of bedwetter. So here we go. Uh, what's under what's underneath? I think I'm on the way out. That is Travis talking. All right. Then it goes, I'm probably just a devil's form of laughs and entertainment. Save your moral panic for the preacher or the president. You realize when you get all said and done, you're just another joke. You're just the butt of the jokes. You know, you, you think you're in, you think you're cool, you think you're popular, you're not. 
And then it goes with this. Greener on the other side, how about nothing's green? I love that line because we all that said that said so many times, oh, you know what? I'll I'll go I'll I'll take another job, another I'll go another city, you know, greener pastures, you know, it's gonna be better. It never is. If you don't like yourself, if you don't get yourself resolved, who you are, no matter where you go, the same problems are going to follow you. It was a great line. Greener on the other side. How about nothing's green? And then it goes, bashful baby boy, so distracted by my toys. Yeah. For a while, your possessions are going to help you not have to deal with reality. The cars, the women, you know, the fame, you know, the craziness, the drugs, the alcohol. But in the end, it's so empty, it, 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 it loses its appeal. And, and you're left with nothing but your toys that are just toys. It's not real. It's not relevant. And then, you know, it's so interesting how he says that because you think that, you know, oh, it's going to change, but it's going to change. Yeah, it's going to change in a negative way. Now you go to the second verse. And what's interesting about this song, which I've never really had before from breaking music down, is there's no break. Usually you have a break in between, like you know there's going to be like a chorus that the artist is wanting to understand, like this is my thoughts here, I'm chorusing, I'm getting you ready, and then I'm going to go into the next verse, usually like three or four verses, but the chorus is what brings the song together. He didn't bother with that. He was like, boom, I'm going hard, and you know, and usually there's a break in between, there's some, some music, no, 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 unless you're really aware of it, you realize he's going through the whole song. What does that tell me? It tells me this. There's no separation. He doesn't know who he is. You know, Travis to Little Ugly Maine to Bedwetter, it's all it's all one piece. It's like it's like Jekyll and Hyde, but times four, times five. He's not sure who he is, so everything is kind of being in together, mushed in together. Um, it goes like this, verse two. You never thought about you only. You never had to worry about which part of you to show up. Oh, great two lines. Because you don't know who you are. Are we Travis tonight? Are we Little Ugly Maine tonight? Are we Bedwetter? Is there a fourth person I don't know about tonight? So I need to know. You know, help me out. I'm getting ready for the show. What do I put on the cards tonight? What do I put on the on you know on on you know on the on the information for the for the people coming to watch you? Who are you tonight? Because I don't really know. And if I don't really know, then you don't really know. And you don't know yourself. And you're just as stupid as you've always been. Yeah. You know? Boom. This is this is little ugly Maine ripping him, saying you're just as stupid as you've always been. You think you're gonna you're gonna run, you're gonna run, you're gonna run where you're running to. There's nowhere to run. You're still yourself. You know, <laughs> you look over your shoulder, still chasing you. And who's chasing you? You're chasing yourself. When you don't like yourself, this is what happens to you. You're just as stupid as you've always been. Then it goes like this. I could go inside a window and disappear. Just observe, just over here. If I was glass, I'd revert back to sand. Scattered through the sea, I could pass through your hands. None of this will happen. Nothing will ever. Uh, guys, let me tell you something. This is a great understanding of what depression is, what disassociation is, what isolation is. You, you could be in a room of a thousand people chanting your name. You're amazing. You're great. You're the goat. Greatest of all time. Please sign my, sign my shirt, sign my pad, take a picture, take a selfie, take a video. And you feel like a grain of sand. That's what depression is. That's what disassociation is. That's what isolation is. You should be the happiest person in the world and you feel miserable. And he does a great job with those, th those lines saying that. You know, I could go inside a window and disappear. Just observe, just over here. I wonder what people are really saying about me. What do they really think about me? And I told that to people too. When you're in a room, and you walk out, and you think no one's talking about you, they're talking about you. <laughs> uh, good or bad, but they will have a comment about you. So expect that. And um, if I was glass, I'd revert back to sand. Yeah, I'm going back. I'm going back, scattered through the sea. You know, I can pass through your hands. None of this will happen. Nothing will ever. It was beautiful.
That's what the pressure, you feel so empty and so alone. It's incredible to me. Then, the things that I believe could never, ever happen. I'm standing by a microphone and yelling at a wall. Pick a thousand names. You're still nobody at all. <sighs> wow. Shot to himself. It's almost like he's punching himself in the face. You know, it's just a lot of noise. Go pick a new identity. And this song is about really trying to find what is my identity? Who am I? Where am I going? I'm lost. And guess what? It still does not change. You're a loser. You think it's 20,000 fans chanting your name, blink. You're just looking at a wall. You know, it's all fake. W what have I accomplished? You know, oh, what did I achieve? Who am I to these people? And he's screaming and yelling, why? Because he's unable to make sense of it. It's not making sense. And then finally, he shoots up with the outro. I'm not sure what it was. I'm not sure what it was. I'm not sure what it was. Was it the words of an angel or a devil in disguise? He's going back and forth with that. That's fine. But I like the outro. I'm not sure what it was. He slows it down. It's like he was doing 150 miles an hour, and now he just takes his foot off the gas. And he's going like 150, 130, 110, 90. You, know, you get the idea. It just glides. I'm not sure what it was. What was this? What just happened? Did I get anything out of this? I, 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 I shared my soul. I bared my soul. I, you know, I puked my guts out. You know, I'm, I'm naked in front of you metaphorically. You know, I, I made myself open. What, what just happened? Did anything come out of this that's going to be positive? So the song is amazing. The song is great. Now, here's what I want to do tonight. And this took a lot of time and a lot of effort to really do justice to this person. In 2017, in January, he wrote a long piece about his experiences with mental health. Because I realized, and we had to hold off on this one, actually, because we realized initially we thought we had the essence of him. We didn't. So we had to go back and kind of rip everything up and start you know, from the beginning, which is fine. And... We got the information that we needed. He wrote a long article about his experiences in the mental health system. And the guts that it took to do this, I'm in awe and I'm humbled. And I want to read certain things that he said in a statement in 2017 and kind of clarify a couple of things for you, the audience. Here we go. After three months of sleeplessly, anxiously glaring into the eyes of an old monster that, was su that suddenly grew a new head. Yeah, that's mental illness. You think you can hide from it? it? It will find you. New head. You think you push it down like whack-a-mole? Comes right back up. Whack-a-mole comes right back up. After continuous unsuccessful attempts for months to contact psychiatrists and doctors, I reluctantly checked into the hospital today. That is called what's called a voluntary admission where you, you yourself will check yourself in. That does happen. People think it doesn't. You can do that. You come into the ER where you go into a certain psych hospital with the insurance, but you can check yourself in. He goes like this. He says, after six hours of constantly reassuring myself I was doing the right thing, I was finally seen. Not uncommon. You can wait all day. I mean, these hospitals are jammed ceiling to ceiling, floor to floor. I mean, the rooms are full. That's not even in a, uh, six hours, actually not even bed. I've seen people wait whole days to get, you know, to get seen. It's not unusual. Um, and then it goes, he talks about people coming to see him. Now he put this there. He goes, he, this is a really in interesting way of how he perceived himself and why he wanted to go in when he did. I chosen to go in at a time when I was feeling, where, where I was feeling okay. So I would be able, fully able to articulate and describe the symptoms I was experiencing so I could potentially receive the most accurate treatment. I thought that made the most sense. Okay. Next, next paragraph. I didn't want to wait until I was in the midst of some anxious episode and having to hyperventilate my troubles out through a salty, humiliated fog. I thought that made the most sense. Last paragraph. I sat and calmly described my symptoms. I tried to convey how terrified I was. I tried to tell him I couldn't do it anymore. Very smart. He went in on when he was feeling okay to talk. You see, usually the people that we get in psych hospitals can't. They're like, they're so far gone. They're not able to give us anything that we really need. It takes us days to get through to these people. 
but he actually did it the right way. He said, hey, this is, I, I want to go give you what I got when I'm feeling able to articulate how I'm feeling. Very, very smart what he did. Okay. Then it, there was a question added. He goes, are you suicidal? Do you want to hurt anyone else? All right. And he had some issues with those questions, how they were presented to him. Just for myself, and I've done this thousands of times, what I'll do is when I have to ask personalized questions like that, because they're personal. So if I say to someone like this, I'll say, I'm not really sure, or I got to get through this, I'll say, listen, I got to ask you this question. Are you suicidal? Just gotta, I just got to ask you. And this way they don't feel that tension of like being on the spot because it's humiliating, it's embarrassing, it's frightening, it's scary. The same thing, I have to ask someone a question about being molested, sexually abused at any level. I'll say, look, I got to ask this question, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not really sure, but I have to do this. Just, you know, just give me an answer if it happened to you. Have you been molested on any level? Have you been sexually abused? I don't throw in their face like, and okay, are you been sexually abused? They, they shut, they shut up. They don't want to respond. I always gently do it, particularly with kids. Has anyone ever touched you in an inappropriate way? Things like that to show them respect. Okay. There's a way how you say these questions. And he goes, I was discharged, handled back my clothes, given a Xerox list of some websites about suicide prevention and feel better with some other equally patronizing verbal pat on the back. I was disappointed to read that because I'll explain this a little bit later. You don't do that. You can't do that today. You have to do a thing. It's called a warm handoff. And I'll hopefully get to that to explain that a little bit deeper. You have to have outpatient resources such as an, a, a clinical appointment, see a doctor, maybe a follow up with an, you know, with with a, some kind of program. You don't just let someone disappear. It's, it's unethical and it's it's a huge violation. And then he goes like this. He made a comment. I'm so tired and exhausted of constantly hurting myself and everyone around me. Yeah, this is what it's like. You know, you realize you have enough insight to realize I'm not going anywhere. I'm in trouble, and everyone around me is suffering. I'm. I'm I'm no fun to be with. I sleep all day, you know. I'm, I'm ir irritable. I I I snap at the smallest thing. Not good. So I wanted to clarify what he said because he had some really insightful comments in what he wrote. Now, and this is one of the things I had to discuss with my with my producer. I could go on and on and on about the comments that I read about what he, how he had experienced it, how people related to him. There were thousands of them, thousands from the song from what people wrote in, and many of them were about very disappointing, similar experiences to what he had. Fine. I'm not disputing that. I'm not arguing about that. But there were a couple of comments that had some awareness that I want to kind of share with you guys. So in case anything happens to you in the future, you have a little bit more understanding, a little bit more ammo internally to know what to look for and what to be aware of if you find yourself in this kind of situation. Okay, here we go. This one person said, um, he's a social worker, and you don't have to, because the two most common reasons why you get into a psych hospital generally tends to be suicidal or homicidal. I mean, that's just reality. There is depression, there is anxiety, there is PTSD, but the two big boys are going to be, honestly, suicidal or homicidal. No argument there. So this person has talked about this, that you can voluntarily admit yourself. Another person said also is, you don't always have to go into a psych ward. That's pretty extreme. You can also look at something in the community for yourself and try and find somebody that you can relate to based on his experience, his, his or her background, whatever, that you can relate to about your issues. Fine. And then finally, I had one other comment that I thought was helpful to share is that someone said a comment like this. They said, I feel your courage. It must be courage to acknowledge one's own brokenness. It takes guts. It takes a real person to do that and just open yourself up for ridicule, embarrassment, shame, and say, I have a problem. It's not easy to do. To see the brokenness around you can be one that anyone can handle. I relate. Stay strong. I feel you have, you have courage enough for that. Great comment. Wow. Impressive. Like letting you know that you... It's not easy. It's not easy to admit you're having problems, that you're suffering. So these are the comments that came in, and I could spend hours just going over comment after comment. What I want to do is this. I want to clarify now some things you should be aware of and how the process works when you 
are going to be admitted will find yourself in that situation of going into a psych unit. Okay. Um, I have little doubt, first thing off, I have little doubt that this was a terrible experience for him and that he clearly felt that he got nothing out of it and that, in fact, he felt it set him back. Okay. And, again, the comments were so very, very clear, people very much related to him and his experiences and what they went through in a mental health situation or a psychiatric situation as well. Okay. A couple of things I'm going to share. And again, I could, I had to spend like hours just breaking it down to the pages that I did. And I'm still not even doing, you do the topic justice, but just to give you guys some information. Most people are admitted, whatever the state is, whatever the form is, it's called an L2K. And what an L2K stands for is that you're seen as a danger to yourself or others. And the vast majority are written by police or mental health people. Those are the ones that can do that. Fire and rescue tend not to get involved with that stuff. They don't really want to touch that. Ambulance crews, we're not going to write that stuff up. They will, but they really would rather not. And it's really going to fall under police and mental health people. Okay. Um, you can walk into an ER and get admitted. Now, it has to be a big enough hospital for that to happen. If it's a big enough medical hospital, you will have a psych unit in there, but it's not like you think like 40, 50 beds. At most, it's going to be five to 10 beds. They're not that big as you think. So they will evaluate you medically first, and then they'll move you into the psych unit if you need to go there. So I wanted to clarify that that does happen. People do walk into ERs and say, I'm going to kill myself, or I'm very, very depressed, and you can be admitted for you know bizarre behavior. That does happen. Um, what also happens is this, if you go to a psych hospital by itself, they generally don't have the medical facilities or the medical wherewithal to treat you if there's a medical problem. They don't have that. So they're going to send you to a medical hospital first. You won't even go to a psych hospital first, but they'll just transfer you to get you checked out medically, which takes like two to three days to make sure there's nothing on board that they're going to walk into that's going to be a problem, like i.e. If, you if you're pregnant, if you have hepatitis, like certain things are very scary, if you have COVID now. So you got to be careful about those things as well. Okay. Um, your insurance is going to be a huge factor, whether you have it or you don't have it, or are you from out of state? Like in Nevada, we get a huge number of people coming from California that are out of days where they don't, you know, California insurance does not cover Nevada, puts you in a different category. Health insurance, mental health insurance is huge. And a lot of people don't really even understand that. That's in itself a three hour topic. But your insurance, when I worked for this company, you know, it was always like, before we can admit, you know, to having Bruce come out to the house, we got to go over the insurance to see if the insurance covers, you know, an assessment and therapy. It takes work. It, it's a whole back office process that people don't really understand. Um, my experience has been, you know, when you are in these psych units, they're trying to do the best they can, but they're temporary. They're not there to be there for a long time because it's in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. So you're going to be there for like two to four days, but the goal is to have someone coming in to do an assessment on you to get you in and out and make a decision, you know, can you be discharged? Not everyone from who goes into a psych unit will make it into, you know, a regular psych unit, will go to a, go be diverted to a different hospital. If they can get you out before you have to go there, it saves everyone a lot of money, a lot of time, and that's how it works. So it's not, the, the system is set up with different, like basically fences to try and keep you from going in ultimately. So there's different levels. So Okay, are you feeling better now? That's what they're going to ask you repeatedly. Are you still suicidal? What, do you have a game plan? Do you have a place to go to? Where are you going to stay? For us, a huge one is where are you going to stay if you're on the streets? Are you going to go to a shelter? There's all these different factors that go into it, and a trained assessor is looking for those issues when they're talking to people. Okay, another thing also, um, you could even go to a, a strictly psych hospital, and they're going to have what they're going to have their own version of an ER you may very likely be discharged from there and not even make it inpatient as well. So there's all these different factors that go into it. And there's different rules for kids, different rules for adolescents, different rules if you have drug and alcohol issues. There's all these things. 
So I want to kind of clarify that. And just to understand something, two last points. On an inpatient unit, if you do make it, you're going to be seen by what's called a treatment team. A psychiatrist, you're going to be seen by a social worker, clinical social worker, an RN, and a psychologist, and maybe an OT person as well. And they're going to have follow-up for you. So it's not just going to be like, you know, you're going to be just discharged. It's going to be outpatient services set up for you to go someplace. And here's the last thing, what you want to look for. How often do you see your doctor and social worker? What does the day consist of? Is there group therapy? Are there groups you're going to? Are there activities? What do you do? Um, Are you discussing options for being discharged? So that's what you're really looking for. Again, I've heard plenty of horror stories. I'm not discounting any of it, but I wanted to share how it should be done and what you should be looking for. Here's the point I want to make. I got a ton of respect, ton of respect for this artist. Huge. He opened himself up. He went. He, he like a kamikaze. He went and he actually tried. He tried to get help. It wasn't what he wanted. It wasn't successful. But the man tried. I have such respect for him. And I'm hoping since he wrote this and his experience that he's getting the help that he needs. What is he suffering from? It's pretty obvious just from the song alone. I mean, I, again, I don't treat him. I don't, want, I don't like doing that to make, you know, blanket assumptions. But the way that song came across to me was depression, you know, anxiety. Um, I wonder if there's any kind of like trauma. You know, he feels isolated and he feels dissociated. He doesn't feel like he belongs anywhere. But he tried. And it takes a lot of guts to do that. He tried. What I'm telling everyone that's watching this video is, this guy, to me, is a hero. Forget about his music. He's a great artist. We all get that. I, I don't disagree. But he's a hero to me because he opened himself up and he tried. And that's the point of this channel. Don't give up. Go out and get help. If it's not the first time, if it's a whiff, it don't work, try a second time. Try someone in the community. Get some resources. Look at different options. But get the help that you need. Bedwetter. Little Ugly Mane, I hope you're feeling better with everything in life right now. I hope you're moving forward. Continue to make the great music that you did. For everyone else watching, give this man the kudos for what he did. And don't be afraid to do the same thing what he did. Didn't work out, so what? You keep it going up there and swing and never give up till you get the help that you need and you feel good about yourself. Guys, that's it from here. Bruce Muffs and LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada. Thank you.